Have you got a truck that squats every time you put a load on it? Today I'm going to show you how to put on a Firestone Ride Right uh, Air Spring Kit. Uh, this is going to be going on a 2006 Dodge, but it also covers 2002 to 2008. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to do it. All right, the kit includes everything you need uh, to install the units. Uh, the only thing you're going to need is a 21 millimeter wrench, a uh, 15 millimeter, and a 9 16. Uh, unfortunately, I'm lacking the 21 millimeter for some reason. Um, usually have one, but I'm going to go ahead and use just an adjustable crescent wrench. And you're also going to need a razor blade um, or a utility knife. Also, you'll need a jack to jack the vehicle up off the suspension and uh, some type of work light. You can always take the uh, wheels off. I'm going to go ahead and opt to leave them on and just install the uh, system down below. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do the uh, passenger side first. Uh, this is the br bracket for the bottom of the uh, unit. So we're gonna take one of our bolts that comes with it, and it's showing to put it in the first hole here, you know, first and second. And just go ahead and screw that on. And I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that a little bit loose and we use a 15 millimeter wrench for that. Right. Oop, I did get it too tight. Goodness. And we'll go ahead and loose that up a little bit more. Okay, so that's that's in. That's all there is to that. So next thing we're gonna to want to do is uh, go ahead and pull these thread protectors off and discard those. This is a heat shield. Uh, I've got a stock exhaust on this, and this is just gonna keep the heat from uh, affecting any of the rubber, or the, yeah, just the rubber on the unit itself. So we'll take our bracket, place that up like so, and take a couple of our nuts and get those screwed on. Now these are locking nuts, so they'll only go so far, and then you'll have to wrench them down the rest of it. And this shield, it also just floats around. So, you know, just kind of get it to the point where it's, it's going to be out of the way, but yet effective. Okay, so let's tighten there. So we'll go ahead and tighten these down. Now there are torque specifications in the back of the manual. So you'll want to refer to those as time goes on here. We'll go ahead and get that tightened up a little bit more. Okay. So next thing we're going to do is pop out our protector for the, uh, the air, and we'll get that started. And this is where the open end wrench will come in handy. We're going to line that. Just like so. Okay. Now you can hear that the air, it wants to self-inflate. So uh, all the directions, uh, they want us to cut a six inch piece uh, of the tubing, put it in here and install the chuck on itself. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is take a six inch piece of tubing and measure it out with our hand here. That's six inches. Take a tubing cutter or a, uh, that's why you have the uh, utility knife. And we're gonna bend that straight. And just insert that into the fitting. Now, this fitting is when you pull it out, it starts to grip itself. To get this out, you'll hold back on this brass collar here and just pull it out when the time comes. But for now, we just gotta get it in there. And then we're gonna take our other Schrader valve. We're going to compress the spring itself. Stick that on. And now it stays in place and it's down. That way it's a lot easier to install. Okay, once that bracket's uh, ready to go, uh, we're going to need to remove the bump stop here um, because this, this unit is actually going to bolt up to that. So we'll go ahead and take that off and that's 15 millimeter. 
I might not be doing with this. I may have to get a little bit bigger unit. Oh, there it goes. There we go. Now, I would highly suggest using uh, impact wrenches on this. Let's see where I get this off. Those are a little hard to do. So, unfortunately, if you don't have an impact wrench, you'll have to do it that way. Remove them, but ideal. So I'll take that off. So you're going to want to keep these bolts up. All right, now I get the bump stop off. I'm going to go ahead and fit the unit into place. I went ahead and torqued these two top ones down uh, because getting back to those is going to be kind of a bear. So I'm going to have to just position the unit. And on the bottom on the one side, it has its form to the axle. So that's a good thing, of course. And we're going to take the U-bolt. I'm going to take that and go, just go ahead and go around the bottom of the spring carrier. And then just get that aligned and insert it into the two holes on the bottom of the bracket. Just like that. Okay, good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a couple of the nuts on there. Just keep that in place. All right, that's done. So the next thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and get these snug down. Okay, this is tight, but it's not overly tight. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in the carriage bolts. Drop these down. And you're going to find everything is like super duper long. And my guess is that that's just in case there's a lift kit on the back. That gives you a little extra room. And I'll probably be putting a lift kit on this truck, probably a two inch lift kit on this here in the next six months or so. So that actually is a good thing to have a little extra bolt. Okay. Okay, got those. Just using a deep well socket and uh, my little AC Delco battery. These actually are very good. It's a little 3 8 unit. You get them off Amazon. I've used this and abused this for two years and the batteries are still good. And it just keeps, keeps working. Okay, so next thing we got, as you can see, there's quite a gap here between the, um, between the air spring. So this is the time we're gonna go ahead and pull in on the on the air. Just pull that out. Now the top one is going to be kind of a bugger. So you're just going to bend that down to you. And release that. I'm going to grab a bunch of tubing and uh, stick it up, up and over everything, kind of feed it through and go ahead and get that attached before I go ahead and, and uh, pop it into the top. I got my tubing run down the uh, frame rail. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that square. Um, one thing you want to make sure is that there isn't any you know, roughness on the fitting or on the pipe itself. So you know, make sure that's clean and uh, not scratched. So we're going to take that. Install it into our fitting on that unit itself. And then just go ahead and take up the slack here. Now I've got the tubing ran. I'm going to go ahead and take the existing bolts, the bolts that came with the unit, or the uh, bump stop. And actually, no. Okay, I'm going to have to lower the vehicle to let the, uh, the frame rest up against the uh, air spring and uh, so I can get these bolts in.
Okay, got that done, and everything's gonna be good now. So we'll get the bolt started. There's that one, get the back one. And the front one, I'm sorry. Okay, what I'm running into is because this heat shield isn't square um, on the uh, on the airbag, the uh, the back flange here is co covering the bolt hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of pliers. I'm just going to bend that down out of the way uh, to so I can get the bolt in. Okay, I got the uh, the heat shield bent out of the way, and I've got the back bolt or the I'm sorry front bolt already tightened. Tighten this one up. Do a little tweaking on this one too. There we go. I'll get the back one tightened and then we'll get back with you. Now that everything's tightened down, uh, you'll be able to torque these bolts here, here, and here. Uh, these you won't be able to unless you have some super duper hexagine uh, deep well socket for that. And uh, so. Uh, this side is tight. I'm going to go ahead and go to the other side and work that out. You can see right here I brought the uh, tubing down the rail or the frame of the uh, frame tubing on the truck and I've got the protective cover on here uh, that goes right up to the fitting and uh, so I'll go do the other side. It should be just a carbon copy of this side except for the heat shield. Alrighty, I've got the driver's side on. That was actually a piece of cake compared to the other side with the uh, the heat shield. I'm going to feed the uh, tubing down now. So what I'm going to do is, and I wish I would have done this on the other one, but I didn't. Um, take some black tape and go ahead and wrap that tubing. The reason I'm doing that is um, the fittings that these go into are, they have a little uh, stainless steel bite on them. But then it also goes into an O-ring. If, if the tubing itself has any scarring on it, um, it won't make a good seal and you'll end up having to redo it. So go ahead and just put some black tape on it. I'm going to go ahead and I've got the uh, or passenger side one right sitting right here ready to go. I'm going to feed in the driver's side. And it's kind of a pain because this stuff just wants to coil so bad. So sometimes you can massage it, try to massage that out of it, but it is actually pretty stuff, tough stuff, so we're just gonna have to deal with it. So I'm gonna take that down here. So now, once I got it right through there, I'm gonna feed this into this frame tubing. So it's gonna to wanna to try to coil and catch on everything. Um, you know what? I'm actually gonna take some black tape. I'm gonna put it over the end of here. Hopefully it'll slip a little bit better. That way I'll cover up the hole in case any dust gets in. Okay, so now I'm gonna feed that through. And there is a bolt here for the bumper. We're gonna to have to try to go under that. So we'll just go like this. There we go, okay, so that's there. And then on the dodge here, there's another hole here. So we'll continue feeding it and try to keep this coil from getting out of hand. Keep feeding that. Okay, and then there's another hole right here. Uh, so I'm gonna feed that till I hit that hole. Hopefully, because this stuff is just wanting to curl up so bad. There it is. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay. So now it's through the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and take my uh, tape back off. Okay, and that leaves a nice finished edge there. All right, so now I'm gonna take this part and I'm gonna go ahead and insert that into the fitting on top of the airbag. Okay, that is it. Okay, perfect. Alrighty, now we're at this point. Um, on my Dodge, there just happens to be 
two holes on each side of the receiver hitch. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and utilize that uh, for the uh, uh, Schrader valves and for the air, air fill. So I'm going to take my tubing that I slip down and I'm going to cut it about like so. I'll straighten that out a little bit. I'm going to insert it. I'll take the washer they provide. Slip that in. I'm going to just put the nut on. And there you have it. I'll tighten that up and I'll do the other side. Okay, that side's done. Go ahead and put the cap on, protect that. Any excess I have, I'll just uh, tie wrap up with the tie wraps they provide. Okay, there you have it. Now, uh, what you'll want to do though is once everything's tie wrapped up, actually before you want to do that, before you tie wrap everything up, put some air to it, get a bottle of soapy water um, and uh, spray all the fittings, make sure there isn't any bubbling. If there's any bubbling, you'll have to recut the fitting and reinstall. So I'll do that real quick and then I'll tie everything up and we'll finish up. All right, that's installed. Um, like I said, this is a 2002 to 2008. Uh, Dodge Ram 1500. Um, when I did bubble test everything with my uh, soapy water, I did have end up having a leak on the driver's side right here at this fitting. Uh, so I took it back apart, recut it, reinserted the tubing, and uh, put it back together, and no problems. Uh, brought it up to 50 psi on both sides. It did raise the truck quite a ways uh, when I did that. So that is definitely going to be a big deal because we do a lot of camping. Uh, hauling of horse trailers and just trailers just in general. So I uh, hope you liked the video. If you found it helpful, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, I'll be happy to get back with you on that because it really was not a, not a big deal to put this together. Once again, this is a Firestone air spring kit for a 2002 to 2008 Dodge. Um, no drilling. It was awesome. So uh, if you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and thanks for watching DIY on the house.